Elton John bought his pet rabbit to the gym. Well, it's a little fit bunny. Today, I'm going to recap a 2020 action thriller film called Disturbing the Peace. The film opens with Marshal Jim Dillon, the devoted police chief of the serene town of Horse Cave, a place with just under 1,000 inhabitants. Marshal Jim is steadfast in his dedication to uphold harmony in this calm locale. His loyal sidekick is Deputy Matt Reynolds. On a regular day, a pair of bikers from a notorious gang make an unexpected entrance into the town. As they ride by the police station, Deputy Matt's attention is piqued. Intrigued, he asks Jim about the biker's sudden appearance in their quiet town. Their presence is peculiar, especially at such an early hour. Yet Jim advises Matt to remain calm, speculating the gang members may have inadvertently stumbled upon Horse Cave. But Matt isn't the sole individual surprised by the bikers. The moment they step into a nearby cafe, the locals cast their gaze on them, silently questioning their motives. One biker, named Shovelhead, causes a ruckus by insisting on an alcoholic drink from the cafe's proprietor, Kathy, despite it being morning. Kathy's refusal angers Shovelhead, pushing him to demand a beer. She retaliates by hitting him with a bottle, provoking him further. He then challenges her to a brawl. His colleague, Jarhead, watches this unfold. Just in time, Jim makes an appearance at the cafe. He quickly intercedes, halting the skirmish, and takes Shovelhead into custody, directing him to the police precinct. While Shovelhead is detained, Jarhead departs without any repercussions. At the station, Jim becomes more skeptical about the gang's motives in their town. As a result, he orders Matt to transfer Shovelhead to a bigger police station in a neighboring city. As Jim stays back to guard Horse Cave, his hunch proves accurate. As Matt is en route to the city, the rest of the biker gang covertly descends on the town. It becomes evident that Shovelhead was a diversion, a tactic to distract from their main agenda. With the town's defenses compromised, the gang aims to disable the electrical substation, immersing the whole town in darkness. At this juncture, Jim is at Kathy's cafe, engaging in lighthearted banter with her. But when the electricity cuts off, his alarm bells ring. He immediately heads back to the station to gauge the gravity of the situation. While Matt is on his way to a nearby town, he spots an individual lying on the side of the road. Thinking the person is hurt, he approaches without suspicion, only to find himself ambushed. The man is part of the biker gang, and as Matt gets closer, he's held at gunpoint and taken captive. This deceit is not the only one set up by the gang. Another police officer on patrol notices a van driving excessively fast. As the officer goes after the van, demanding the driver step out, other gang members ambush and fatally shoot him. A gang member named Dirty Bob then disguises himself in the officer's uniform and takes over his patrol vehicle. Back in Horse Cave, Jim tries to connect with other police departments for backup. However, the gang interferes with the communication lines, preventing any outside help. The town is effectively cut off. Jim's concerns heighten when he hears the distinctive sound of approaching motorcycles. Racing outside, he witnesses the gang's intrusion into the town. Trying to deduce their plan, he is caught off guard as Jarhead sneaks up and points a gun at him. The gang's motive becomes clear. They aim to rob the local bank. Diablo, the gang's leader, is familiar with Horse Cave, having grown up there. This intimate knowledge of the town and its police force allows him to craft a detailed plan for the heist, knowing well Jim's possible actions and limitations. The plot is further facilitated as Diablo has planted an insider within the bank as a teller. Once they have all bank employees under control, Diablo directs the bank manager to help open the vault. The manager obliges, granting the gang access to the bank's reserves. Having successfully raided the bank, Diablo orders some of his members to confine the bank staff and the town's residents in a church. However, he keeps Jim and the newly arrived deputy with him. It becomes apparent that Diablo has more to share. The bank robbery is just part of his bigger scheme. He has knowledge of an upcoming large cash deposit from a casino. Determined to steal this as well, Diablo's next move is to intercept the armored vehicle transporting the casino's money. The pair of guards with the armored vehicle are unaware that their destination bank has been raided due to Diablo's effective severance of all communication from the town. 
As they await the truck, sudden gunfire echoes, originating from a skilled elderly sniper concealed from sight. He systematically eliminates gang members, pushing the rest into hiding. Amidst the turmoil, Jim and Matt discreetly make their escape. Unbeknownst to them, a frightened woman nearby is inadvertently captured by Diablo. Using her as leverage, he threatens to kill her unless the hidden sniper presents himself. The sniper, recognizing the hostage as his spouse, emerges, pleading for her safety. However, Diablo heartlessly shoots the old sniper. Realizing the importance of the female hostage, Diablo attempts to manipulate Jim and Matt, threatening to execute her unless they come forward. Panicking, Matt triggers an alarm within their hideout, which infuriates Diablo into impulsively shooting the woman. Recognizing a direct assault on the gang is infeasible, Jim devises a booby trap inside their shelter. Exiting stealthily from the back, they activate the trap as the gang approaches the front. Strategically, Jim and Matt split up, allowing them to monitor the gang's activity. For a period, Diablo and his crew provide a brief hiatus, anticipating the armored truck's arrival. Staying within the bank, they plot to surprise the truck's guards upon their entry. When the truck finally reaches, its driver senses an unsettling stillness around. Growing suspicious, he asks his colleague to scout the bank, while he stays inside the vehicle. Little does he know, Diablo's crew is ready within the bank. They quickly capture the investigating guard and march him back to the truck. They demand the driver unlock the vehicle. When he declines, Diablo cold-bloodedly shoots the captured guard. With the guard now out of the picture, Diablo and his gang use explosives to force entry into the truck's rear compartment. Once they secure the cash, they rush to the church where townspeople and bank employees are held captive. In a calculated move, Diablo targets Kathy, intending to use her as a bargaining chip against Jim and Matt. Concurrently, Matt, equipped with his long-barreled weapon, sets himself up near the church, aiming to take out Diablo and his crew with precise shots. But Jim, knowing Matt's shortcomings in long-distance shooting, fears a stray bullet might hit Kathy. As a result, he discourages Matt from taking the shot. Not wanting to be sidelined, Matt decides to confront Diablo head-on, in hopes of securing Kathy's freedom, and subsequently opens fire. Seeing Matt's brave act, Jim gets compelled to shoot a gang member, hitting his target, which enrages Diablo. Furious, Diablo commands his men to bring Kathy and Matt back inside the church. He then gathers some of his gang to track down and capture Jim, oblivious to the various traps Jim has strategically placed throughout the vicinity. One of these snares, cleverly concealed in a car, results in a massive blast when a gang member unknowingly activates it. Inside the sanctuary, Kathy discreetly tells Matt about a radio located in one of the church's rooms, suggesting they could use it to summon backup from nearby police stations. Seeing its potential, Matt acts on it. When the gang members get momentarily distracted, Matt sneaks into the said room, finding the radio in working condition. He sends out an urgent distress call. Simultaneously, Kathy spots a lapse in a gang member's attention and pounces, disarming her effectively. With the threat neutralized, she leads the captives to a safer part of the town. In another part of the town, Jim engages in an intense firefight with Diablo and one of his main associates. After an extended battle, Jim succeeds in taking down the associate, but Diablo slips away, rushing to his car where the remaining gang members await. One of them updates him about incoming police reinforcements, urging them to make a swift exit with their loot. This makes Diablo shift his focus from Jim to ensuring their escape. Just as Diablo is set to flee, Jim re-emerges, determined to see justice served, even with a dwindling ammunition supply. Diablo is responsible for the loss of numerous innocent lives, and in Jim's view, only the ultimate punishment can serve justice. He tenaciously chases after Diablo, who is trying to escape on a hijacked motorbike. Their intense chase is short-lived as Jim's accurate shot forces Diablo's bike to skid and crash. With injuries hindering him, especially a damaged leg, Diablo finds himself trapped and unable to continue his escape. Jim, resolute in his decision and believing Diablo's terrible actions warrant the utmost penalty, takes aim and delivers the final blow. 
This act brings a measure of tranquility back to the town of Horse Cave. Reassuming his role as a law enforcer, Jim deepens his relationship with Kathy, his significant other, heralding a new era of optimism and the possibility of better days ahead for the community. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.